Europe will go extinct in a day if Africans stop producing agriculture for them, if we can continue to stop spending money with them. In order for us to truly be African, we have to relearn again what African really is and who we really are, and not just be white people with black skin. You understand? I am an American. Um, I am from Florida, uh, originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I lived in Philadelphia for 60 years, Florida for four years, and I'll soon be 65. I am a retired teacher in the New Jersey school system. Um, and after retirement, that's when I moved to Florida. And I thought I was finding the American dream until my son said, Mom, let's get out of here. Let's go visit Ghana. My son wants to move, he wants to relocate. I said, well, let's visit first. I couldn't believe the internet, which was showing the pricing of housing, newly built homes. So I said, I gotta go and see for myself. Then I'll leave. And sure enough, it is a wonderful place. I'm so glad I'm here. I've gotten to meet so many of my brothers and sisters from all around the world, from France, from Sicily, from Italy, from oh, everywhere, even the United States, even Jacksonville, from where I'm from. I've met them here in Ghana. So when they say, come on home, that's exactly what they mean. Come on home. How would you say? All right. <laughs> Give thanks. My name is Richard Zulu Shabazz. I am from the Lost Tribe of Shabazz. Um, and I consider myself a new African, a concept that was taught to me by my queen mother, Njeri El Ghani. Um, I am here in Ghana. I've been here coming back and forth for the last three years. For the last about a year and a half, I've lived here permanently. And um, I am the outgoing president. As new Africans, we have a new concept and a new idea as to who we are. Our people have been colonized here in Africa by the British, uh, especially in Ghana and other places, by the British, the Dutch, the French, and the Americans. So with that being said, in order for us to truly be African, we have to relearn again what African really is and who we really are, and not just be white people with black skin, you understand? So with that being said, um, again, I've been here now permanently for a year and a half. And uh, I'm building, I'm the outgoing president of the Pan-African Village in Asebu, which was the free land given to us by the king, uh, King Obatechi. Uh, and again, as we were talking about earlier, nothing is free. Even that land costs $1,200 a plot. So nothing is free, free, you understand? Um, so with that being said, um, speaking on Juneteenth is definitely something that I'm looking forward to do. So I'll wait on you to go forward from there, brother. All right, um, first of all, how did that all come about? Juneteenth, how did that come about? Uh, well, I, I learned about Juneteenth probably about four years ago when I was watching the show Blackish on TV. I'd never even heard of Juneteenth. Wow. And I guess 61 years. And why wasn't I privy to it? I don't know, just busy with schooling, busy teaching, busy with home life, busy, 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 busy. Not even acknowledging who my ancestors are or were and um, not acknowledging the fact of, you know, being an African, uh, just an American, being, I guess, uh, brainwashed. I hate to say that, but if you're a victim, and, and you don't acknowledge it, then you can't work on it. Right. So now that I know my history, I've been now to the castle. I, I've seen the door of no return. I've seen the, the open door from the ground where the girl would take a bath and then go up and meet the governor to be raped. That is, is, is forever in my mind. Um, I asked the, the tour guide, I said, well, how long did the governor live? Those governors didn't live very long. They died at an early age because of what they were doing to our people. So they were suffering the consequence. So I've learned these things
from the tours that I've gone on just in the past few days. I've only been in Ghana for 14 days, mm -hmm. working on being here for 21. We leave on Saturday. But what I've gained, Africa has taught me, without saying a word, I've learned lessons. I've been, they say, hearing from the ancestors. I was calling it hearing and learning lessons without a word being spoken to. Mm -hmm. And it's been awesome. Wow. So now I know wow. that, yeah. Yeah, I've learned so much. Wow. Yeah. Aquaba. 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 And it was amazing to me that as us as being 4% of the population, we were so black. You understand? Like we had to be because we were such a small group. And they celebrated this Juneteenth holiday and I like had no idea what was Juneteenth. So, you know, with my um, background of studying history and meeting a brother by the name of Mahmoud Al-Khati. He is actually the father of the brother who sings in men's condition, the brother uh, Stokely. Oh. It's actually his father. His father was an amazing historian, and he taught me a lot. And uh, in Minnesota, we used to do this Juneteenth thing every year. So I learned more and more and more about it. And I learned about how uh, the slaves didn't know that they were free in Texas, and then they learned a year later. And there's some conflicts behind Juneteenth because it said that soldiers, black soldiers, came to tell them, but they didn't accept it because they were black, and you know it lasted another year for them. So there's controversy. It was purposeful for them to hide, you know. The news from them? Oh, of course. Definitely pur purposeful for them to hide the news because us understanding that we were given a freedom and that we were actually free meant that we were going to start asking for more things. Mm -hmm. and, and reparations is something that we've been asking for as a people yeah, right. even before we got out of dehumanization. And I want us to quit saying slavery because being a slave or being an indentured servant is two different things from being dehumanized. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've been taught by Dr. John Henry Clark and his, his prize student mama, uh, Marimba Ani, is that it's called the ma'afa. You understand? It's not a slave trade because in a trade you get something from it. 400 years later, we have still got nothing from this experience because we have still not been repaired and that's what reparations is about. And our process of coming here as individuals, like the sister is saying, we are repairing ourselves, so we're giving ourselves reparations. But let's not be confused and to think that Juneteenth is our 4th of July because it's not. Because we have still got to die unfortunately, and shed blood for our freedom. The same way Africans have killed other Africans for all kind of foolishness, a, a lighter skin or a darker skin, a neck being longer than a, than a shorter neck, somebody being taller, you know what I mean, with the Tahutis and all these different things that have gone on in our history. We have to be mindful as a people that when we, as, as a people in our totality, understand our mindset and get the understanding that Africa is ours and Africa must be protected at all costs. Like Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad told us, Africa is not everybody's home, but it's all of our throne as black people. And we must make sure that Africa is taken care of. Because just like a Chinaman is in America, if China doesn't have power, then that Chinaman doesn't have any power. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. As an African, I need to know, especially as a new African, I need to know where my power lies if I decide to spend my money some particular places right. and invest my money. You understand? And investing my money here, I can see a development that I could never see in America. You understand? I own land down here in Ghana. I own a transportation business down here in Ghana. Things that I could have never done in America. And I work and make damn near six figures every year in corporate America. Been doing it for over 30 years working in corporate America. And still never had the money to do anything but to live paycheck to paycheck. You understand? So that's what we're able to do in America. So I want all of my people to know, especially my Guyanian brothers and sisters, that America is not the dream that they're selling you. There's no gold land in the streets. The gold is right here in Ghana. Exactly. The gold capital of the world is right here in Ghana. Right. You understand? It's not in America. So when they're going there and thinking that they're going to find something better, please know that just because of the color of your skin, you and your children can be murdered at any time. You understand? And they can be excused by people who consider themselves policing our community who are considered police officers. There was once upon a time when the police cars used to say, uh, serve and protect. Mm -hmm. They don't say that anymore. No. They just say law enforcement. There's a reason for that. Because they're enforcing the law for corporations.
that are in our communities. Mm. You understand? So there's a difference for that. So for me, Juneteenth is extremely special for us to be able to recognize that we are still behind enemy lines because nobody can give us our freedom. This is not our 4th of July. You understand? This we commemorate this. We commemorate those, our ancestors, who found out a year later they were free. And we celebrate with them because they celebrated hard because freedom is a serious thing, especially in America, when you've been dehumanized again for over 400 years. So, so that is a serious thing for us to be able to know we're free now. But we have to remember that even when they gave us freedom, the emancipation or whatever else they want to give us, the 15th, 16th, 14th amendments and all these different amendments to the Constitution that still to this day states that we are three-fifths human beings. Nobody has ever amended that. Do you understand? So with that being said, we have to always be mindful of where we are as a people in America and understand that we have to have some place else to be able to send our funds and to be able to build a much better peaceful place for our people. And that starts in Ghana. Yeah. Mm. So I applaud my sister here for coming back and bringing her family. She says yeah. she's in her 60s. She looks like she's in her 30s. Because <laughs> black don't crack <laughs> for a reason. You. Yes. You. Black don't crack for a reason because we got a long life to live. We used to live two, three hundred years for a reason. I was watching Blackish, which was a comedy show um, that was played in America. And I'm um, not sure if it was played here in Africa, but at any rate, they were celebrating it through a play, showing the kids in school all about um, what it was what it was all about and showing a little bit of history. So do I remember everything about it? No, I just remembered the date, um, June 19th. And we're celebrating it just so happens to be on the 16th because this is the, the Saturday before the actual date. So I don't know too much about it. I'm still listening. I'm all ears, learning more and more about it. My son, he does more research. He's more of a historian. He's more of a mom. I'm looking at our past and our present. And if we're not careful, we're going to just repeat the past. And he's looking for new horizons. That's why we so looking into the future, what do you envision for the continued observation and celebration of Juneteenth? <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll say on Juneteenth that 10 years ago, nobody was celebrating Juneteenth. Uh, they just made it a federal holiday last year. It's something that people and black people in America have started to push, 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 because it is something that we ought to commemorate, not necessarily celebrate. You understand? And there's a difference between the two. So I will say that it's become more popular now. Um, coming back from D.C. in 2008, when Barack Obama became the first black president, I was with my brother Bob Johnson, who started the World Natural Hair Shows in Atlanta, Georgia, one of the largest natural hair shows in the world. And he started this whole thing with Juneteenth. And at first he started, he did an a event that was like the health and wellness, and it was like 10 words in the title, and then Juneteenth was at the end. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to get something going, and I said to him, Juneteenth is a separate thing. And you need to really, really focus in and understand what Juneteenth is about and incorporate the energy of the ancestors into it so that it can become successful. It is now the largest Juneteenth event in the world mm -hmm. in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's something that we talked about and discussed. So when you say that black people just, you know, celebrate it, no, we did not. And now that black people are starting to get an understanding of Juneteenth, a lot of us, again, as I stated earlier, are making a mistake of making it our 4th of July. And it's not our 4th of July. You understand? So. Juneteenth is something that is another thing that brings us together to remind us. Yeah. And as the Jews would say, we should never forget. Yeah. This is something else to help us to never forget. Yeah. Yeah. My son who um, says, Mom, they give us a holiday, but they get reparations. Um, they get the money. The Jews have already gotten their reparations for the Holocaust and so many others. But we get a holiday. Yeah. And you can see the president, Joe Biden, who's the president now that made this a federal holiday, he's given billions of dollars to the Ukrainians, white people that are coming to America to try to whiten up America even more. He's given billion dollars to them. Okay, this is a class of people who, when the war broke out and we were trying to get out of Ukraine, they were letting their dogs and their cats on the yeah. buses before they would let our women and our children on. So as African people all over the world, we have to understand who it is that's now getting the pensions and the tax breaks that African Americans have fought for for years. So to all my black people out there who have fought against me over the last 20 years to say that we can't get reparations because it'll break America, it isn't breaking America to give white folks money 
billions of dollars to give the Jews billions of dollars constantly every year. It's not breaking America. You know why? Because they print funny money all day long. It ain't worth a damn thing. You understand? Ain't no more gold back into nothing. The only thing that's back in the American money is you. You are the gold. We are the, the consumers. We spend all the money in America to keep that system going. You understand? So I'll say to people, and I'll say this forever until the day that I die, they owe us. They owe us as black people for everything that we've done. We built that country for free. And we were there before slavery. We've always been there. We've been in China. We've been in Russia. We've been in Australia. So reparations doesn't just start in America. It also starts here in Africa. You understand? There are people who talk about how our chiefs and our kings and queens sold us off. Well, let me explain something to you. There were guns being held to their head when they were selling us. Mm -hmm. So let's not just try to act like we don't know who had the guns. Yeah. You understand? Even those particular particular countries, individual countries that did that, they were eventually colonized themselves and put into a form of slavery. So the price has been paid by all of our people, but how much has been paid by Europeans? They will pay the China man, they will pay the Jewish man, they will pay the fake Native Americans who they put up as, as $5 Indians to say that, hey, they get money, but we don't. We're the natural natives to America, and we're not Indians. We're natural Native Americans in America. We were there before slavery, and we'll be there after slavery. Because not only does a corner of the earth belong to us, but the entire planet belongs to us. Because again, we're not just black people, we are original people. So today I saw a video of um, there's this interview. There's this man that I think he went to Kuwait. He's, a, he's Ghanaian, and he was told he was going to drive trucks for the American embassy or something. They got there and he realized that, oh, it's actually a war. Now he's involved in a war which he's not, you know, involved with. Mm -hmm. um, which means that one way or the other, this slavery or this type of colonization is still going on one way or the other. How, my question is, how can the black man for the black African be free from this? Well, I'll tell you, in the teachings of us for teaching reparations, there's no such thing as reparations without separation. As black people, African people, original people, we have to completely separate ourselves from those who are our oppressors. You understand? They cannot survive without us. You ever heard of Dracula? the vampire concept, they suck our energy and our natural resources so that they can survive. Europe will go extinct in a day if Africans stop producing agriculture for them, if we can continue to stop spending money with them. Okay, um, Ghana just shut down the Swiss <clears throat> from selling chocolate to them by saying, you know what, we're gonna produce our own cocoa and we'll produce our own chocolate. And the Swiss is saying, your chocolate can't be great without us. No, you can't be great without us. Right. And that's what we have to realize. Ah, ah. And we have to realize that as black people, anybody who's saying that our, they are our friends, whether it's black people or Chinese, I mean, white people or Chinese people saying that they are our friends and are our allies. In order to be our friends or our allies, Jesus taught that in order to really teach a man, you have to teach him to do for himself. By teaching a man, not just feeding him a fish, but teaching him how to fish. So if the Chinese are gonna come over here and teach us how to drill and get our minerals, they need to teach that to African people so that we can do it for ourselves. We don't need them to bring the Chinese people here to do that. If you're really our brother and sisters, teach us how to do for self and let us move forward. You understand? We don't need you to come in and be our gods. Right. There are no saviors for us. We are our own saviors and we are our own gods. But they have implemented us a mentality that somebody is coming back to save us. And they gave us an image of our oppressor to say that that person is going to actually come back to save you. Our oppressors have never saved us in 400 years and nobody that looks like them ever will do that for us. Nobody that looks like them. No, it has to be us, brother. It has to be us. It has to be our brother. Uh, Malinga in, in South Africa, it has to be our brother in Kenya, our brother in Rwanda, you understand? <clears throat> we have to do for self, yeah. bottom line. And as you stated earlier, in, in, in separating, we have to separate ourselves. Japan separated themselves for thousands of years from Europe. Japan did that so that they can reestablish who they were. You understand? We have to do that as black people. We have to shut the wall down and say that we're rebuilding. You cannot come to Ghana the Lebanese, the China man, the white man. You cannot come to Ghana. You cannot come to South Africa. You cannot come to Kenya. I've been to Kenya recently and I'm gonna tell you, the China man and the Lebanese man is running it over there just as well. You cannot do that. We don't want you. We don't want your influence, we don't want nothing. 
the China man is teaching now that Mandarin has to be mandatorily taught in the educational system in Ghana. Why? Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Amos Wilson taught us how powerful language was. Yeah. And Dr. Amos Wilson taught us that we have to have our own original language that we are speaking to one another. He taught us that the English language was a language of war. And as long as we spoke that language, we would be at war with one another. Wow. wow. You understand? Yeah. Wow. So it's history that we have to have as a people. And we have to have people amongst us who have studied history and can continue to give us complete information. No disrespect to any of my people who've been educators. But Dr. John Henry Clark and Mama Rimbai Nee have said that our people who are educators, our scholastic people, can sometimes be our worst enemies because they've been taught in a system of memorization and to be able to orate the history of our enemy versus being able to go study for themselves and learn the history of who we really are. Yeah. Our dear sister, dear sister here is 63. She's an educator and saying that she's just coming back to Ghana and learning for herself who she truly is as an ed educator. You know how many of our people she's educated and how many of our people that overnight she could change because she has the experience of being an educator and now she has the rightful knowledge to be able to take to our people to say this is what you need in order for me to help you grow your seed. You yeah. understand? Yeah. Wow. And being an educator in math, um, I, you know, I don't take responsibility mm. for, yeah, for some of the other history that has been taught, <laughs> you know, about uh, Christopher Columbus and all of those individuals. But, you know, I, I just appreciate just knowing who we are and being able to stand on our own. When I got here a few days ago, and I saw those China buildings, China hotels, and I was like, wait a minute, where did they come from? You know, how dare they come into Africa and buy up all the land? That's one of the reasons why I'm like, look, we got to get our peace, y'all. Yeah. You better come on and get your part. Right. Come on, because if you don't, it's going to be sold, and it shouldn't be. So I am all for coming to get your land, buy your property here, support your people. Um, my sister-in-law, bless her, a wonderful heart, she went to Israel, took a whole lot of people to Israel, because she's a travel advisor as well. And I didn't go. Said I won't go anywhere until I go see my people. I have to go. Now I feel, <clears throat> feel like I'm free, but I'm still going to come back here. I'm going to be focusing on getting those individuals who feel like they're stuck feel like they're just confined into the city and can't do no better. Their, their rent is going up into astronomical values in, in America and they need to know that they can come here and own and do for themselves. I had a conversation with Talib Kweli and we went back and forth on in social media about this. Him, Dave Chappelle and, and uh, my brother Chance, a rapper from Chicago where I'm from, who came here and did the whole big thing in December when they did the whole you know concert. And I was like, what we have to do is quit coming to Africa as tourists. We are not tourists in Africa. Come here and put your money in the hands of the people who are here, the diasporians who have come here. And that's the, an the ancestral diasporians. Let me just make sure I make that clear, because there's a difference. When you look up the different, the legal term of diasporian, it doesn't fit who we are coming back here. So it's the ancestral diasporians is who we are. And my, my statement is that we have to make sure that we're doing business with our people. Because just like my sister just said, the China man, the Lebanese man, they have restaurants, they have hotels that they have opened up right here in Ghana. And they can only do that because we're spending our money with them. Their people are not coming here spending mass money like that. We are. So when we come here and we're bringing tours here, 50 people to 1,000, 100 people and all that, we have to make sure that we're making sure that money is being funneled through right. places like One Africa, mm. Mabel's Table, you understand? Mm. Palace Africa. We need to make sure that, that money is staying with our people. Mm. Our people are going to restaurants like Soul Restaurant or Joke Jerk Soul Restaurant. You understand? Right. Yeah. We're spending money with our people. Yeah. And we're not just giving money back to those who have been a part of the process of colonizing us. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely, brother. Anytime. Ooh. That's a powerful one.